Let's take a look at the different brushes used in sculpting. I'm first going to turn off symmetry and I'm also going to change the detail size to 10 and put the strength down and go to a new side of the cube and just draw on it with a very low strength so that I add lots of geometry to it so that we can see what the brushes do. Now for the brushes, if you click here, you can see all the different brushes and to get an idea of what they do, all you have to do is look at the name and the picture and that will give you a general idea of how it will manipulate your mesh. So I'm going to go over these pretty fast, uh, not too much in detail, but you could go ahead and play with the different settings and test them out and see which ones you like and which ones you don't. So the first one is the blob brush and this one will push your geometry outwards into a spherical shape and it pinches it around the sphere based on this factor right here. So if you put this down it will have less pinching around the sides and it will have a smoother fall off. And just like the other brushes you have the subtract option which if you hold down control will do the opposite. The next brush is the brush which I won't go over because that's the one I've been using the whole time and it basically just pulls your geometry outwards or inwards. The one after that is clay which is kind of like the brush but if you've been working with clay you might like this one better because it has more of a natural feel to it and it feels a little bit more organic so depending on whichever one you like go ahead and use that one. The next one is clay strips and this like the clay brush if you've been using clay you might like this one and this basically adds one strip of geometry at a time on top of each other or wherever and you can see that the top of it is more flat than say the draw brush where that's has more of a sphere shape. The one after this is the crease brush and all these brushes have shortcut keys or most of them do anyways. For the clay brush it's the C key and for the crease brush it's shift C. Now the crease brush is used very often for things such as skin folds or wrinkles things like that so if I left click and drag you can see exactly what it's doing basically it pulls the mesh inwards and pinches it in the middle and if I hit control it does the opposite so it will push it outwards and push and pinch it in the middle now the next brush is the fill deepen and to show you this brush I need to quickly add some geometry here so I'm gonna bump the strength back to 0.5 so I can get some more deformations in here. Now the fill deepen brush basically if I want to fill in this area right here it will fill in the area based on the surrounding geometry. So if I left click and drag here it will fill it up to the level of the height of these. So if I left click you can see what it's doing. It's basically leveling it out and same with if I hit control it will deepen it based on the surrounding geometry. Now the next one is the flatten brush which as the name implies flattens down your geometry and contrast which is the opposite will bring the geometry back up. The one after that is grab which is pretty useful. This one allows you to grab your geometry and move it around. Now usually you don't want to grab it and move it too drastically such as this because then you could tend to have some weird geometry and your sculpting might not work as well but this brush is still very useful. The shortcut key for this is the G key. Now the inflate deflate brush which is the next one is really useful and I use it quite often and this is kind of like the draw brush but it pulls the faces out towards their normals and it inflates it or deflates it. Shortcut key for this is the I key. The next one is the layer brush and this again is like the draw brush but this one stays 
like if you get this one, the brush, and you left click and keep dragging, it will keep adding levels on top of it, on top of itself. But this one, the layer brush, stays at a certain height. So right now it's determined by this value, 0.4. So if I draw, you will see that if I draw back on it, it won't go any higher and it will stay at that level. So it basically adds geometry one layer at a time. However, if I let go of my mouse and left click again, it will add a second layer on it and make it higher. The next one after that is the mask brush, which is really cool because this one allows you, for example, if I want to influence this area right here, but not this surrounding geometry, what this allows me to do is just color in the geometry that I don't want to have influence and then get a brush such as the inflate brush and you will see that now if I drag on here it will inflate that however if I drag here nothing will happen so this is very useful if you have small details or very intricate areas and you don't want to mess up that geometry you could draw the mask on it and then just influence that other surrounding area let me take off the mask that I have right here really fast. So to do that, I will hold control to select the subtract and I will subtract all of this. Now the next brush is the nudge brush. And this one, what it does is it nudges or pushes your vertices uh, in the direction that you move your mouse. So like so. Now the next brush is the pinch magnify brush and this one is pretty useful because what it does is it pulls your vertices to the center of the brush. If I put the strength a little bit higher you will see. So it brings in all the vertices and pinches them all together towards the center of the brush and if I magnify it will push them outwards. Now the next brush is the polish, which is kind of like the flatten. I'm actually not sure exactly what the difference is, but it basically flattens down your mesh. One after that is scrape. And what this does is basically allows you to, if, if you don't have any uh, protruding geometry or anything, it won't do much. For example, if I do it here, you can see that nothing happens, but based on where your plane of your geometry is, it will, as the name says, scrape away, if I put the strength up, it will scrape away the geometry to be level with the original plane height. So right now, as you can see, I could scrape away the bumps And if I hold control, it will push it the other way, so it will make peaks instead. So this brush I haven't really used that much, but it could be used pretty usefully in different situations if you want to level out your mesh and make it flatter. Now the next brush is the Sculpt Draw. Shortcut key for this is the D key. And this one is kind of like the brush and I'm not sure again what the difference is with this one and the brush but it does pretty much the same thing where it will draw onto your surface or if you hold, if you hold control it will subtract it. The one after that is a smooth brush which is used very often and since it's used so often a shortcut key for this is if you're on the draw brush and you're drawing and you want to smooth it on any brush if you hold shift and left click it will automatically switch to the smooth brush and you could smooth it that way you don't have to go here and switch it you could just draw and smooth it by holding shift so the smooth brush does exactly what it implies it smooths out your geometry that might be a little too strong it smooths it out and spaces out the vertices and such and this one is used very, very often in sculpting. The next one is a snake hook brush, which is really cool because what this allows you to do is to 
if I left click and drag, you will see that I can pull out geometry kind of like a hook and just bring it out to however far I want and create new geometry this way. So if I want to create something like horns or spikes on a creature, this tool is very useful for that. The one after that is a thumb tool, which is kind of like the nudge tool, except this one flattens the mesh and pushes it uh, in the direction that you move your mouse. So it's kind of like using your thumb, it flattens it and then pushes it. And the last one is the twist brush. And this one I don't really use that often because it sometimes it acts up a little bit, but this one, if you left click and drag, allows you to basically rotate and turn your geometry. And so those are all of the brushes. I would encourage you to just play around with them, play around with all the different settings that you have here and see which ones suit your needs. The last thing that I want to take a look at is the base meshes. Now the base meshes are basically the meshes that you start your sculpt on. In this tutorial our base mesh has been this cube. But let's say that we want to model a human or a human head. Starting the sculpt from a cube might be a little bit hard because you would have to sculpt out the arms and the legs and the head, etc. And it might be a little bit of a challenge to start from a cube. So a base mesh is basically you model a basic crude form of what you're going to be sculpting so that you have more of a general idea and different parts of the body to sculpt on, whereas with a cube you would have to extrude everything out of a cube, which is not ideal. So if you wanted to sculpt a cartoonish character, for example, you could create a very simple base mesh like this. Now this one might be a little bit too crude and might need to be refined a little bit. But as an example, you can see that here, instead of a cube, I would start from this. And I just quickly modeled this, and you can see that it has a very very few amount of vertices and what you don't want to do is spend time adding lots of vertices and adding lots of detail a base mesh you just want a crude basic um, form for what you're going to be sculpting so here for a human you might even want to add the hands the fingers obviously make it a little bit more detail but you don't want to spend too much time because once you have your base mesh, you could go to sculpt mode and let me turn the strength of this down and go to my draw brush, enable dynamic. And now once you've had your base mesh, you could go in here and just start sculpting and also turn on the X mirror. And just from this, it's a lot easier than having to start from a cube because you have the different limbs and you don't have to extrude the arms and etc. Now this is one example, but for example, if I go over here to one of my creature heads I sculpted, you can see that here I have a base mesh of the head, which has the horns and the basic shape of it. And then I started to sculpt on it and got this. Now towards the end, I noticed that I kind of wanted to have the shoulders and part of the chest, and I didn't have that in my base mesh. So you are able to extrude and pull out the vertices and your mesh from your base mesh. You don't have to have the whole thing in. So right here, I pulled it out from the head and created the chest and the shoulders. But if you know what your character is going to look like, it's best to create the base mesh as as uh, close to what your character is going to look like just with the the most basic forms possible as you can see from this this has almost no faces at all and it from this to this there's a huge difference in the level of detail but again the base mesh is not used for detail or anything it's just to get you started faster than having to use a cube so hopefully you learned something from this tutorial, and if you have any requests for any tutorials or anything you'd like to learn, just send me a message if you need any help with anything, 
send me a message for that also, and I'll do my best to help.